coming up on Current OC. Tonight, we revisit the ongoing dangers of vaping. Plus, we'll show you some alternative methods of staying fit. These stories and more, it all starts now on The Current OC. TV studios along 6th and Atlantic. Raider Nation's leading news magazine starts now in high definition. This is Current OC. Hello and welcome to The Current OC. I am Jackson Neal. And I'm Luke Leonetti. Welcome to The Current OC. Before we start, we want to wish everyone a safe and happy spring break. Enjoy your time off. For when we return, the school year will fly by fast and furious. Recently, I reported on the dangers of vaping. I tried desperately to point out the severity of starting such an addictive habit. So, I decided to follow up my report. This segment illustrates how vaping ravages our lungs with a condition referred to as popcorn lung. Before Christmas break, we showed you the truth about the dangers of vaping and electronic cigarettes. The unregulated industry has picked up steam in recent years, and millions have begun to use the products. These products contain unsafe ingredients, such as the addictive stimulant, nicotine, and many more chemicals. Until recently, we haven't known much about the possible side effects of these various chemicals. However, the Harvard School of Public Health did a study on vaping and other e-cigarette products, and the results may surprise you. Recently, a group of researchers from Harvard University conducted an experiment about vaping. The study concluded that three out of every four e-juice bottles contain the harmful chemical diacetyl. This artificial flavoring has been in the news before. Back in 2000, diacetyl was the probable cause of a rare lung disease developed by eight workers at a microwave popcorn factory. This popcorn lung is an irreversible disease where the tiny air sacs in the lung get scarred. This results in the airways thickening and narrowing. The side effects include coughing, wheezing, and shortness of breath, similar symptoms to the chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD. While there are ways to treat popcorn lung, there's no way to cure it, making this diagnosis permanent. In addition to the diacetyl, the Harvard researchers found acetopropanol in 23 of the 51 bottles tested and acetoin in 46 of the juices. Both of these chemicals are similar to diacetyl and how they can have harmful effects on the body. This means that one of these unsafe chemicals is present in 92% of the bottles tested. Up until 2016, the Federal Drug Association had no oversight of the vaping industry. In that year, the FDA finally got involved and established some regulations. However, starting in August of 2016, manufacturers got three years to review their products and make sure they met the new standards. So until the late summer of 2019, there will be no official oversight by the FDA of the e-cigarette industry, so these chemicals will continue to be sold for the time being. With all this information, it leaves you as a consumer to make a choice. It has now been proven by one of the most prestigious universities in the world that vaping can have harmful physical consequences. So, what are you going to choose? This has been Jackson Neal reporting for The Current OC. Thanks, Jackson, for that well-researched report. Safe to say that anyone choosing to vape at this point needs to realize that destructive behavior often needs help to beat the addiction. From poor health choices to healthy ones, we move to a story about moving to a more healthy lifestyle. Our own Gia Canizero reports on how to start making exercise part of your goal to a healthy lifestyle. Going to the gym can be difficult and possibly even boring. But who says you have to go to the gym to get your daily dose of exercise? We here at The Current OC want to introduce you to other methods of working out. The main thing you have to do is get out of your comfort zone. You never know what could pique your interest. 
Some may not realize it, but dance is pretty physically demanding. Who knows? Maybe it'll be the right exercise method for you. Or not. But don't worry, there are plenty of other ways to stay fit. Yoga, although it is associated with finding peace, it can also be an amazing workout. Trying different positions helps with different areas of your body. But if that doesn't work out for you, on to something new. Of course, any type of a sport is an extremely enjoyable and tremendous workout. Keep on trying different sports until you find the one you love. Once you have found the physical activity you enjoy, you gotta stick with it. It may take some practice at first, but it will be well worth it in the end. This has been Gia Canazera reporting for The Current OC. It's tough to be healthy during the Easter season with all those chocolate eggs lying around. Come to think of it, what does a decorated egg and a giant egg-hiding bunny have to do with the Easter holiday anyway? Our own Luke Leonetti did some digging to find out. April is just around the corner, and Easter is coming up quick. Time to get your baskets and eggs ready and prepare to meet Peter Cottontail himself. But have you ever wondered just how these traditions came to be? Well, on this episode of The Current OC, we'll be discussing the origins of Easter eggs and the Easter Bunny. First, some background on the holiday itself. The name Easter comes from the pagan tradition known as the Festival of the Oster. This was a celebration of the goddess of fertility, who was symbolized by a rabbit. As we all know, rabbits don't lay eggs. So where do the eggs come into play? Well, some countries use cuckoo birds instead of rabbits, which I guess explains it. But the real reason is that eggs are supposed to represent new life and birth and reincarnation. Decorating eggs was not a pagan tradition, but was in fact a Russian tradition. Back in the 19th century, the Russian royal family decorated eggs and gave them to each other as gifts. Eventually, the holiday moved to America. Easter was commercialized, and the Easter Bunny became the character we all know and love today. This is Luke Leonetti, reporting for The Current OC. Well, we finally made it to spring break. You would have never have known it was spring last, last week with all that snow. So Kayla, is our break going to have spring-like temperatures or not? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We have been seeing some temperatures that are not so warm, but I do think that we will be warming up for our spring break. If you take a look at our current radar, you'll see that we have no precipitation over us, but we do have a bit of precipitation all around, but that does not affect us, so you might want to head out and enjoy some sunshine while you can onto our area temperatures. We are seeing temperatures all over the 30s and 40s, 41 in Wildwood, 41 in Millville, 40 in Philadelphia, and 38 in Trenton and Lakehurst. These are temperatures that I do believe are warming up as compared to what we've seen. Onto our local conditions, we are 42 here in Ocean City with a humidity of 89, so watch out for that. Also, wind speeds of 4.6, that's not too bad. On to our weekly forecast. This weekend, we will be seeing slight chances of rain, and we will be in the 50s all throughout the week. If you take a look at Friday night, we will be seeing slight showers and sun on Saturday onto the rest of the week. We will be seeing some clouds, but nothing too bad. So I do think we will be able to have an exciting Easter break. Thank you, Kayla. As you enjoy your break, why not share it with us? Send us a photo of you enjoying your time off. Just send your school appropriate photos using the hashtag OCTVBreak18 and we'll share them on our next broadcast. Well. That will do it for us on this edition of The Current OC. Remember to log on and catch all of our shows and additional content by visiting oc-tv.org. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at OCNJTV, so be sure to like our page and follow us there too. Have a happy and safe spring break, and as always, thanks for watching.